All right, so let's get this going again. Uh, this is uh, transmission flush number two on a 2007.3 liter diesel here. Uh, I'll show you how, I'll kind of walk you through. It's actually really not that hard. It's, uh, in my opinion, it's almost easier than changing the oil. Um, but the reason why I'm doing it the second time is because upon towing our trailer up a uh, steep grade, the transmission fluid got really hot. I think uh, the over the overdrive light started flickering or blinking rather, but um, I think that indicated about 270 degrees. Um, so with 5,000 miles on the old fluid, which was still new, about 4,000 miles, and at $8 a quart, it's kind of a humbling experience. But uh, I wanted to get that flushed out just so I make sure I don't have any issues with it and uh, put in some more of this, uh, this uh, Valvoline Mercon V or Merc 5 um, automatic transmission fluid. And uh, it's super easy. I'll walk you through everything. And uh, it took me a little while the first time. So hopefully the second time will be easier. And then you guys can learn how to do it better than I did the first time. So um, first of all, I bought this stuff from O'Reilly's. I think it was like seven, maybe pushing $8 a quart. So it was about 150 bucks for about 18. I think hold 16. I got two extra to help flush out some of the old stuff. Um, I bought it in a box right there. Well, a couple boxes anyways, and I was going to start tearing into it without counting them, but um, I realized, and you're going to ask me how I know, hence the name of the channel, um, I've done something like this before without verifying the quantity, got halfway through the project, realized that my truck's incapacitated, I can no longer go back and get the supplies I need, and um, kind of stuck until I got another vehicle to run back to the auto parts store. So, uh, I trust O'Reilly's but I definitely had to verify. So I counted all 18, all 18 are here. Thank goodness we don't have to go back and, um, and get more. So anyways, uh, I'll put you down. Sorry for the video quality. I'm just doing this on my phone. I um, hope it's quick and uh, not drawn out. So uh, we'll get to it. This video actually misspoke. Um, it, this truck holds 18 quarts of um, transmission fluid. You should buy 20, not 18. I bought 18. Um, because the fluid I already had in here was new. It had one episode of overheating. Um, so I didn't really want to spend the extra 16 bucks, which I probably should have. Um, but knowing that the transmission fluid is pretty new, I went ahead and just got 18 thinking if I put 18 in there, that's fine. I don't need to flush the extra two quarts of oil out because it wasn't really that dirty to begin with. It didn't have, you know, 50, 60,000 miles on it. So any old transmission fluid they got left in there, which was still new transmission fluid, I'm going to think that that's all right. So, anyways, that was my mistake. I misspoke. And uh, make sure this section gets in there. Looking at the back of the motor, I'm sure most of you are aware. This is the dipstick. This is also where the oil will be going in, and the transmission fluid. Um, and then coming over here, it's a better picture ever. Uh, really all you need is a 5 8 wrench. I'll show you where to disconnect that from the transmission uh, transmission. Uh, I think I got about 10 feet the first time. You can see I labeled it. Uh, this is a second go around, uh, unfortunately, and um, got just a five gallon bucket. Um, all the oil should fit in there. It's hard to keep track of um, how much out versus how much in. I just kind of estimated it the first time um, and it actually ended up being pretty good. So if you crawl into the truck here, you see a transmission pan right there. And then on the passenger side, there we go. This is gonna be this little guy here. So you don't have to worry about this larger nut. It's just, you gotta, it's the five eighths for the smaller one. And once you unscrew this, this line pops out and then you put the uh, rubber hose over this line right there. And I got 10 feet cause it's gotta go way under there, out through there and then into that bucket. All right, I neglected to actually mention that you do have to drain the transmission pan. Uh, it's kind of common sense, but uh, nonetheless, I forgot to mention it. You can see how cherry red this is. It looks great. Like I said, it has like 4,000 miles on the on the fluid, but if you're here smelling this stuff, it smells burnt. So like I said, as a precaution, because it got hot, I'm going to uh, change it and hopefully that'll 
prolong or help prolong the life of this uh, transmission, which I believe still has about 240,000 miles on it. So, all right. So now that we've drained the transmission pan, uh, you can see I just have undone this with I think it was a five eighths I said earlier, and this hose kind of backs out. Apparently, there's a couple different sizes. Um, of the flange that the, the rubber has to fit over. You can kind of see it right there. Um, that's pretty large. Uh, so when you're at the auto parts store or selecting your tube, your hose, make sure that it fits over that. Um, I don't know if that's going to leak a lot if you don't drain the transmission first, um, but you can see it's just kind of dripping. So I have my pan under there to help catch it. Um, anyways. All right, so we've drained the transmission fluid pan. We have our tube hooked up to the return line where I showed you previously. Um, and now we're going to uh, fill the transmission pan or the transmission fluid, or replace the fluid, fill back up the pan. Um, I'm just gonna use this long funnel here. And it helps to have a little tapered end right there. I think there's a couple bucks at uh, AutoZone and that goes right into the uh, dipstick port there. Um, it's important to do that uh, refill it before you turn it on. Uh, that way there's no air bubbles. The, the, the fluid keeps flowing and the, um, the, no air gets sucked into the, um, into the transmission. I'm not sure if that hurts anything. I really haven't done it. Uh, there's a write-up that I read before I did this, and so that's what they recommend. So I tried it, and it worked great the first time. So let's uh, continue on with uh, round two of a uh, super expensive transmission fluid flush. All right, so that was the first round of uh, the Keon transmission fluid drainage. And uh, you can see, I mean, man, I really burnt this transmission fluid coming up. I mean, it's it's red when it runs, but it's, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty damn dark. Um, like I said before, it got to be like 278 degrees or something like that. Uh, the overdrive light right here uh, was flashing. So I uh, pulled the code and that's what it gave me. Um, so like I said, I'm just doing this as a precautionary, but uh, dang, this stuff, this stuff is burnt and um, it's only got 4,000 miles on it. So I'm glad I'm doing it. All right. So we've just completed the uh, transmission fluid flush and the change. Um, transmission is now all buttoned up and I am left with a large bucket of transmission fluid. Last time I just dumped it into the uh, uh, oil container here, but uh, I thought it would be a little bit better this time. And I should get like a little siphon going. So um, siphon that out without getting hardly any, or really any transmission fluid in my mouth. Um, and uh, that way you can regulate uh, the amount of transmission fluid you're putting in the bucket. Um, this is a 20 quart, so it should hold it just fine. But in the event that it doesn't, it's a lot easier to stop this from overflowing that um, and just leaving the transmission fluid in the bucket and just going to the nearest uh, place to dump it out. So um, anyways, that helped me. So I didn't make such a big mess this time. Last time, uh, transmission fluid went all over my absorbent pad and uh, didn't get a chance to use it. So I had to get another one, which isn't a big deal, but still made a mess. Anyways, um, if you want to do that, it's really not too hard. That is taped in the bucket and I just put that all the way down. Um, so it's feeding from the bottom. Anyways, uh, we will uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Well, after going back and uh, finishing up this job, I wanted to double back around. Uh, I was just about to drive it, so I decided to check the transmission fluid after it had been sitting for a little bit um, to get an accurate uh, reading. And when I pulled the dipstick out, um, it's at the very, very bottom of the cold section on the uh, dipstick. It should be closer to the uh, warm section of the dipstick, which is slightly higher, meaning I have to go back to O'Reilly's and get another bottle of transmission fluid. So, learn from my mistake. Like I said before, I got 18, you're supposed to get 20, get 20, get eight or 19 at least because it's so hard when you're, um, you're running the engine, transmission fluids coming out. It's too hard to know to the court exact amount, uh, whether you're going to be pulling the right amount out versus putting the right amount in. I ended up probably a court short. So now I have to go and drive maybe, you know, 15, 20 minutes to, uh, to O'Reilly's, which is going to cost me more in diesel to get over there and my time. And uh, I really wish I would have just spent the extra 
eight to 16 bucks uh, to buy the one or two extra quarts. So um, learn from my mistake, I cheaped out. Now it's gonna cost me a little bit of time in the end, which isn't a big deal, but still kind of a pain. Anyways, uh, <laughs> hope you enjoyed. Buy 20 quarts.